it's a trick. It's a trick, really. It's a trick, you know. The trustees and, 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 and the chancellor and Ronald Reagan, they go down there to L.A., you know. They don't know how to deal with the situation because they don't even know what the basis of the situation is about. They can't even talk to us without the faces getting all red. Really, they can't even talk to us without their faces getting all red. We upset them. We upset them. Just, just by the way we look, just by our color, you know, they, we upset them, you know. So, so rather, than, rather than, 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 than give us what we want and let us take care of ourselves, you know, they send in a front. They send in a front. They send in, try, they send in a brother and, and, and expect us to let, to, let, to, let, to let them use him, you know, and get away with it, you know, and not understand what's going on, you know. But like we understand, you know, we understand. We spent a long time thinking about this strike and thinking about why, you know, we were going to call a strike and who, who the question was finally going to come down to. And we know, you know, we know it's the chancellor's office and the board of trustees. And we cannot afford to allow the situation of, of the higher education is in to continue. At this time, it's just too recent for us to think it out. Immediately following this press conference, I'll be meeting with administrators and advisors to determine what our future course of action shall be. Now, my first reaction is that a militant minority of the faculty has hitchhiked onto the militant student violence-ridden strike for a vicious power grab. The college, the public, and the students will be the victims. I hope that the public that has supported me so strongly will express its views to the San Francisco Labor Council. There was no need to call in large numbers of police. There were no bombs or fires, and those who wanted to teach or to study were able to do so in peace and safety. Any efforts to attempt to enter the administration building, disrupt the building or its occupants will subject you to disciplinary action and possible arrest. We urge you not to do this. Rehire Murray! Rehire Murray! Now! Rehire Murray! Now! Rehire Murray! Now! Rehire Murray! Now! Uh, our position um, is that uh, we're going to teach, regardless of the decision of the Board of Trustees or any other white races in the state of California, including all uh, paramilitary organizations. Uh, the position of black people here on San Francisco State's campus is the same. Uh, if, the, if the chancellor uh, doesn't feel that I should teach, then he's going to have to come into the classroom and take me out or send the pigs in there to take me out, and uh, no black person will tolerate that. That there are those, some of those, who want confrontation for its own sake, and we have to deal with that fever as best we can, but pretty soon that ought to run its course, since the issues themselves are not keeping the parties too far apart. The issues themselves are as they are. It's a dispute that ought to be settled. Mr. Mayor, how yes. do you regard uh, President Hayakawa's announcement yesterday about essentially closing the campus down as far as demonstrations were concerned and rallies and so forth? Well, we are going to make the final determination of who's going to be arrested in terms of violating the law. And we have taken the view, for example, very early this morning that peaceful picketing on campus itself is not an offense and therefore there's no occasion to arrest anybody for it, so long as it's carried on peacefully and so long as there's no obstruction. But on the other hand, I think that Dr. Hayakawa has an absolute right to say that there won't be any rallies or any loud noise in the vicinity of the classrooms or the libraries, so long as he designates a substitute place where the speaking can be held. And Elmer Cooper, these are the black administrators. Oh. First of all, that we've got poor people and we've got black bourgeoisie here also. And I want you to know that there are no distinctions now about what we believe and where we think we've got to go. We feel that we are united and we want you to know that we are supporting the demands of the third world and the black students at this time. Demand number one, that police be immediately withdrawn from this campus. I said yesterday that the demands of the black students 
and the Third World Liberation Front are not discussable, negotiable, debatable, or compromisable, and there comes a time when we stand up and say we will protect our young finest, whether they are black men or black women or brown men or brown women, we will be here with our bodies tomorrow if those police are not removed they are too valuable to us understand that what i'm saying is that if you understand that the the, the uh, that the structure in which your lives are in is decadent then you must move to destroy that structure once you move to destroy that structure then you are able to build but more so for white people than for black people, their role is a question of positive destruction. For black people and for the rest of minority groups, our role is to build. And that's what black studies is all about. I know that uh, what I'm saying may be uh, sort of boring, but um, you have to understand uh, things of what's happening because um, if you listen to the radio this morning and you heard the news, uh, you said that there were a thousand pigs waiting to come on this campus in term, you know, they expect that the students are going to do something again. See? So that if you then confront the cops without an understanding of what you are confronting them with, then you are, you are a nihilistic type of person. You, do not, you have not been able to see the difference between destruction and construction. You have not been able to decide in your own self that I have, I have reached the position where I uh, am now convinced that uh, education as it exists in the campus is irrelevant and that I'm going to do something about it. Yeah, the third world people on the campus, you know, they want, uh, they want a black studies department, you know, and a school of ethnic studies, you know, with the uh, with the power and the authority and the control, you know, all of that within the school itself, within the hands of the students and the teachers of the third world in that school. Uh, we don't want, you know, like I said before, we don't want any, any, anybody else telling us what our education is going to be like. And the only way we can get that is by getting control of our own, our own education, our own monies, and exercising the power that that, that will give us. Basically, you know, what, what we want, you know, what the demands are made up of, you know, is uh, just uh, you know, the authority uh, from the state, you know, the state educational system to, uh, to have our own education, you know, to be able to develop our own education and to teach our own education, you know, and not be interfered with by uh, people who don't understand us, you know, people who can't relate to us, you know, people who, uh, for the most part, you know, have made it impossible for us to get through schools, you know, in, in any in any proportional way as to uh, the way white people have gotten through schools. You know, uh, what all the fifteen demands are about is that uh, they are demands that directly relate to you know, our getting control and the authority, you know, <coughs> essentially the power to be able to dictate our education uh, without interference from the outside. Uh, for the most part, uh, you know, that's all. That's all that there is. That's what the question is. You know, I think that basically that's why the administration won't deal with us. You know, we never, we never uh, had any kind of communications with the administration as far as setting up a negotiating team or even an offer to set up a negotiating team or anything. You know, that's, uh, that's it. That's it. I think, you know, like, <clears throat> the question, you know, I mean, it's the, you know, things that have been done, you know, individuals, you know, that have been pointed out, like George Murray, you know, uh, have really, uh, are really not the, not the question, you know. The question is, is that uh, we don't want that to happen to any of our people, you know, uh, and we want the, uh, the power to make sure that it doesn't happen, you know. Because we don't want to go through these games, really. We don't want to go through these games, you know. And third world people on this campus would want, want to get back to school. They want to get back to school. They want to get back with, to learning, you know. But what kind of a, a situation is it, you know, when uh, our own teachers, you know, 
who we struggle and fight to get into the classrooms to teach us, you know, get fired. Just at, at any, any time, at any time. We can't learn in that kind of situation. There's no sense to us to going back to school until we have our teachers back. Otherwise, you know, we, we can't go into these, these classrooms and get an education. What we get is, is we get this trash, you know, this trash. Which if the other people on this campus, the white people on this campus are willing to put up with, that's their business, that's their business. But not for us, not for us. Uh, we need a change, we need a change in education. If we are ever going to, uh, to be able to uh, uh, relate to our people uh, in, uh, in a real way, you know, in, in, in elementary schools and in, in secondary schools, you know, then we ourselves, you know, uh, need a change, you know, right here, right here. Revolutionary ideas American youth concern about human freedom, desires of removing human misery, little concern about the safety of the person.